what, what the haters talking about. Yeah. What's up, family? Baltimore, Maryland is one of my favorite places to visit. I've been going there for years. One of my best friends lived there. And that's where he's raising his kids. So when I heard about Baltimore starting these new initiatives to curb gun violence, I was like, yeah, I can rock with that. Maryland enacted a wide reaching package of gun violence prevention laws last week, becoming one of just a handful of states to get behind little known measures that could save hundreds of lives and millions of dollars. The measure, the Public Safety and Violence Prevention Act of 2018 was designed to address urban violence, an issue that gets relatively little attention in the U.S. gun debate. It's the mass shootings like Newton, Las Vegas, and Parkland that make the headlines, and we know why. Baltimore already has seen success with a prevention model called Cure Violence, a public health strategy that addresses the causes of violence. Caseworkers provide street outreach to those at risk of becoming victims or perpetrators of gun violence and mediate conflict before it boils over. Now this is where it really gets good. Neighbors that have adopted the program have seen far fewer shootings with some recording periods of more than a year without a homicide. Now that's saying something. The fact that there has been so little support for and attention paid to prevention programs reveals a lot about the gun debate. How real is it? They're always talking about where well, black people don't care about black on black crime. The only time they care is when a white person or somebody else kills somebody black. You see, there's always been people fighting to get the numbers down on violent crimes in the black community. But you don't hear about those people and you don't hear about the programs because it don't fit the narrative that black people are savages. Black people don't care about their community. They don't care about safety. It don't fit the narrative. And I know some of y'all don't give a damn what happens in the black community. You don't care about life. You don't care if people die. You don't care if people go to prison. You just want somebody to point the finger at. So you get off to it. You get off to seeing any type of destruction in the black community. Because you need somebody to point the finger at. Because Lord forbid that it's the person looking in the mirror. But here's something I bet you haven't thought about. Taxpayers often end up picking up a substantial portion of the tab for any type of violence that occurs in the inner city. Many shooting victims don't have private health insurance and it's expensive to prosecute and imprison perpetrators. What I'm trying to say is, even if you live in your nice little suburban neighborhood where gun violence isn't affecting you day to day, you are still directly paying for gun violence in nearby cities. So if you can't get on board morally, do it for economic reasons. Guns are not the problem. Societal norms are the problem. When I was growing up, high school, man, everybody had guns. Well, almost everybody had a gun. But there were no school shootings. And a mass shooting would be like, man, that would be like a, a World War Three or something started. Like that was so infrequent. I'm talking about years would pass before some nut would grab a gun, grab a gun and just indiscriminately just shoot people. So it is the people. This is a people problem. This problem was started by people. It can be fixed by people if they were willing to take the politics 
out of the discussion. But at the end of the day, we can do all of this passing laws. We can debate all we want to. We can pass as much legislation as we want, lock as many people up as we want. But the most effective measure to minimizing gun violence is good parenting. No more talk. What the ladies talking about?